Thank That's you, Nancy. Mark Quinn in St. John's, Newfoundland. Still with the weather, of course, an extreme cold weather alert in Toronto has now been cancelled, and although it is a lot warmer today, the mercury will plunge yet again by Monday. The people most at risk are the homeless. One man in Toronto has died, another is in hospital because of exposure to freezing temperatures. Lauren Gostick is a community outreach worker with the Canadian Jewish Humanitarian Relief Committee. She joins us to talk about the challenges of getting people out of the cold. I know you and, and others go out on night patrol going to just find those people who are trying to sleep through the night just to help them so tell me more about that and what you're finding um, basically the majority of people do go inside mm -hmm. when it's an extreme cold alert but there always is a handful of chronically homeless people who um, try to avoid shelters at all costs and basically when there is an extreme cold alert my job is to try my best to either get them somewhere to warm up for a couple hours or hopefully get them inside for the night. So when you, when you talk to some of these people and try to persuade them to get out of harm's way and get into a shelter, I, there is some resistance among some. Why would that be? It's hard to imagine anyone being determined to try and tough it out and sleep outside. Um, it's hard to imagine if you've never actually been in a shelter and okay. seen some of the conditions of the shelter. Um, unfortunately, they're overcrowded, especially when the weather gets uh, extremely cold. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's violence, there's theft, and there's some people who just don't trust going into a dormitory-style room with a bunch of people that are also in a crisis situation. And to what extent do you find that some people who are on the street, uh, they don't want to go into a shelter for all of those reasons, but they're also struggling with mental illness? and it's just it's not a situation they're just not comfortable going into a shelter yeah absolutely some people who struggle with um, severe mental health issues um, could be triggered by like the institutionalization of a shelter like the mm -hmm. locked doors and the signing in and stuff like that um, especially if they've had negative experiences in shelters before right. um, and if they're not completely aware of their uh, surroundings coming with me in a van where I could potentially be a stranger to them coming with me in a van and like me taking them somewhere could be a really scary experience for them and it's easier to stay outside sometimes and what are if, if for whatever reason somebody decides that they are more comfortable in toughing it out and staying outside what are their options because I gather fewer public places are available for them to crash through the night right yeah um, as far as getting inside you know there's a referral center they can go in and get warm for you know 20 minutes half an hour or so um, what I did the other night was let people sit in the van for uh, in my mm. outreach van for 20 30 minutes have a cup of coffee warm them up enough so they can go back outside for a little bit so we're, it sounds like there's going to be another cold snap hitting Toronto come the beginning of next week how do you prepare for something like that? I mean, how worried are you that night after night there are some people who are just going to get really sick? They're actually putting themselves into a life-threatening situation. Yeah. Um, all I can do at this point is make sure that when I go out on the street and it's this cold that my van is prepped with everything um, from gloves to hats to, you know, 20 winter coats to hand out to people if they need another one. And all I can do is try and, you know, offer my support in whatever way that is. And if that's making sure they have an extra coat so they can stay outside in this weather, then that's all I can do. How are you fixed for supplies on that end? Do you have enough mittens? Do you have enough coats and blankets to help? Yeah, when we're expecting a cold snap, we definitely push out an ask to get more stuff, more socks, more mitts, more hats, more coats. Um, but we're pretty well stocked when, you know, December hits and we're getting ready for a cold couple months. You know, you're sure doing important work. In a perfect world, Laura, what should or what could the city do just to help reach out to some of these people? Um, I think as far as like an everyday person is concerned, you know, if you're walking down the street, especially when it's this cold out, to, you know, just ask them if they're okay. Because at the end of the day, you never know what response you might get. And right. if you get a no, I'm not okay, all you have to do is call 311 and they can send an outreach team to the person or they can, you know, aid you in how to help them yourself. So, Laura, I really wish you well in your efforts and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. In other news today, the